Lastly, Congress has already jumped the gun and have at least two senators or possibly two states, I, it's late, forgive me, that are proposing bills already to further restrict the sales and distribution of violent video games. And I'll talk about from personal experience working in retail as an electronic specialist selling video games to families and kids. Uh, how most of this is bunk and bullcrap. Congress uh, representatives propose multiple gaming bills, tighter restrictions, and even adding taxes. And so it begins. Hot off the heels of Joe Biden's meeting with the video game industry, President Obama asked for research into the effects of violent gaming on young minds comes two bills that have been proposed to Congress. The first from Representative Jim Matherson with his Video, Games Rating, uh, Video Game Rating Enforcement Act. The bill will, quote, require rating labels on video games. Oh, gee, I hadn't noticed all these labels, all these labels, all these labels on my video games. Yeah, no, these games are not labeled and these parents are being hoodwinked because these games are clearly not labeled, not labeled, not labeled. No, no, none of that. No, no, these games are under labeled as it is or not labeled at all somehow because a game, at least in terms of consoles, which is at, at the moment the bigger uh, markets, but that's slipping, and for good reason. I digress. Um, you cannot get a game out on shelves without a rating. You know, it just doesn't happen. Or if it says rating pending or something of that nature, it will usually tell you why. The ESRB is there for a reason. And when two thirds of you parents out there aren't even using it, I wonder why it's here at all. But no, this congressman acts, asks, acts as if the ESRB is non-existent, that most, if not all, of these games are never labeled, even online. I've seen ratings. I've seen boxes just like if they were game boxes. So what more labeling do you need? What, what does the entire box have to be the rating label there with maybe a little strip for the title? No box art, none of this stuff, nothing on the back, and just one big label telling, uh, blowing this up to tell you exactly what is in the game? Would that make you happy? <sighs> to prohibit the sales and rentals of adult-rated games to minors. Last I checked, back before Blockbuster and Hollywood went under in my neck of the woods, which, yes, I'm still crying about that, but I digress. If they scanned a game and it had a rating, and even their game boxes had ratings, you stupid idiot, they would say, oh, is this person of this age? If they are not of that age, then the person could not rent the movie, or... The adult had to rent the game or movie for them. Oh, but no, no, no. We can't place actual personal responsibility on the parents. No, no, no. That's a bad idea because actual personal responsibility of people who are actually culpable for the purchase or rental of these games. No, no, that's silly. That would actually make sense. And we can't have that now, can we? No, we can't. Businesses that fail to adhere to this were, were, uh, bill were it to pass would then be fined in excess of $5,000. Now, the current fine from when I last was working at Target was $2,500, and the person who sold the game could be thrown in jail. And if caught, if caught, the retailer themselves would lose their software license. This is no joke. And our industry, our uh, the retail industry does not take this as a joke. They literally do 80% of the time, okay, I've already presented it in my video series, 80% of the time, 
this is enforced. Sure, you can argue the 20%, but would you rather it was 80% of the time it wasn't enforced and there was only 20% of, of retailers uh, over a, a longitude of time that were enforcing this? You know, again, grow up. The bill doesn't sound too outlandish considering that Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft already required that their games released on their platforms must be clear, cleared through the ESRB first. The real issue would be with indie companies on the PC side where some platforms don't have to go through ESRB. It should also be noted that a similar sounding bill was declared unconstitutional back in 2011. And that's good. Now. It's the other bill that proves to be a massive headache for game makers and players alike. Missouri Representative Diane Franklin is proposing a violent video game sales tax to counter the sales of violent video games. Now, as I recall from a story I'd read earlier in the week, uh, or last week, they wanted to put a sin tax on it, which, unless I'm mis appropriating the actual S-I-N word, you would have to actually prove that video games are a sin. Granted, by content-wise, maybe you could make the case in Grand Theft Auto, there's unmarried fornication, there's murder, uh, there's theft of property, um, there's multiple girlfriends that you can get, or at least you could in the game before that, yada, yada, yada. But still, really, she's calling for a 1% tax in Missouri on any games, uh, game that has received a T, mature, or adult-only rating on the ES, from the ESRB. By the way, fun fact, adult-only rating has only ever gone to original copies or reprint copies of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas because of the hot coffee mod. And because of that, Walmart will not sell the game, and Steam has made the game unmoddable because, oh my, oh my good, we can't have people playing around with pixelated boobs, now can we? It's not like they can't go online to torrent sites and get the very best of the very worst of Japanese rape games from Japan. Digital Trends went to Amazon's bestseller list to dig up what teen-rated games uh, could face this tax increase in Missouri. And boy, there are some super violent games here. You don't know Jack, Forza Horizon, Dance Central 3. Won't somebody please think of the children? Oh yeah, I forgot, because that would be appropriate because dancing is a one-way ticket to hell in certain sects of Christianity. Also, dancing can lead to gyrating of the hips, which if I'm to be, if that's to be believed, uh, because they used to film Elvis from the pelvis up, that can lead to dirty thoughts, which then automatically will lead to sex. Just like front hugs are not Christian-like. You have to give side hugs, because if you touch genitals through your clothing, you're going to think of sex, and that's a bad thing. Can you see how ludicrous sex negativity is in today's modern society? I'm not joking here. What the heck? Both proposed laws are unlikely to succeed. Whew. Given the past attempts, and especially one Diane Franklin has no clue what she's trying to do. Link is down in the underbar feel free to peruse the article. Um, because my connection's so wonky, I'm not going to risk going into my Honey Boo Boo rant or the other ones I had planned tonight, which is somewhat too bad, but oh well. I guess they're better suited for tomorrow anyways. Uh, but the point is, uh, you know, if this stuff succeeds, it gives people in other states an excuse to follow suit. And then suddenly it's not just a 1% tax. It's something higher than that. And in this case, they're trying to say a 1% tax would go to helping mentally ill people. It would be their way of funding Missouri's ailing mental health um, situa uh, situation they have over there, which sounds not too terribly bad, but there comes a point to where it's like, 
is it really going to go to that? And is it going to go to the right people? Remember, there are biased researchers, there are biased people, and there are people who are willing to uh, do unethical things because who's going to call them on it? We need a lot of reforms when it comes to mental health and the mental health system, and I've already talked about this in the many, many different social ill topics I've talked about, from pedophilia to sex addiction to ADD, you name it. There is a huge, huge problem in this country in terms of how things are diagnosed, how things are generalized with a one-size-fits-all diagnosis and treatment program, even if that treatment program actually causes more harm than it does help. But who's to say it's actually going to go to that? They may promise that, and then the funds go somewhere else, to somebody's campaign funds, to something else that is unrelated for a bigger campaign against violent video games, because these people have so played these games. They so understand what goes into these games, and they so understand the, me the mechanics of playing games. This is why we have the president asking for Congress to fund a $10 million study when we already have so many longitudinal studies that show no link or such a minuscule link between violent video games and violence that it's, it's ridiculous. And yet this passes as progress. This passes as adult behavior. This is how adults should behave making up imaginary problems and making up imaginary solutions to fix a non-existent problem and then pat themselves on the back because I'm helping. No, you're not. You're delusional. You're beyond delusional. And what's sad is you have a position of power that people like myself, rationalists like myself, do not have. And I hate it. I really hate this system. I hate how this works. I hate that even though these have likely no chance of passing, worse things might. And you know who's going to be hurt by it? Gamers and artists and people who work their butt off in a medium that people just choose not to understand because it's not of their tastes, because it, it offends their delicate sensibilities. Well, I'm sorry for your delicate sensibilities. But your sensibilities do not get to choose what is and is not the social norms, nor should they ever be allowed to choose those. 